Fasten your seatbelts. It's playoff time. The Bills and the Oilers ready to get it on in an AFC wild card game. And the road to the Super Bowl, Project Pasadena, starts here at Orchard Park, New York, this afternoon. You don't play a better first half of offensive football than the Oilers have just played. The Oilers have jumped on top now 35-3. to We were hot that first half now. I've never seen Warren better. We made catches that we haven't made in years. I mean, it was a fantastic half for us. The lights are on here at Rich Stadium. They've been on since this morning. You can pretty much turn them out on the uh, Bills right now. That's what I was asked after the game. Did you have a chance, I believe? I, I said, yeah, I thought we had a chance. About the same as winning the New York lottery. They're over there high-fiving each other, and it's over, and, you know, they're never going to come back. But there was 45, 50 guys that didn't believe that was over. Four-man rush, drops back in the pocket, sails it long. Oh, oh baby at the 10, at the 5, in for the touchdown. We knew that we could come back and win that game. Because it started when we saw the other team turn off the intensity. And we kept playing hard and we got lucky. Looking to throw, rolls out, throws, down there is a Reed at the five, in for the touchdown! Andre Reed has scored! As this game swung, ho oh, oh, ho oh. like a tidal wave. He looks, he throws, three touchdown! Andre Reed, three straight touchdowns! We should have been able to, worst case, shut it down and, and just play even in the second half. And offensively and defense, we, we just couldn't get it done. Throws, and it's deflected and intercepted by Henry Jones at the 40. Everything happened so fast, it was really hard to keep up with what was going on until the game was over. But while the game was going on, man, it was, I'd never seen anything like it. Bills can win it here. Wright puts it down. The kick is on the way. I think it's a heroic comeback, a miraculous comeback, and also uh, one of the colossal uh, collapses in the history of professional sports. The story of the NFL's greatest comeback began a year and a day earlier in Mile High Country. In the 1991 divisional playoffs, the Houston Oilers built a 21-6 lead over the Broncos. And even after a late Denver rally, Houston still appeared to have the game in hand after pinning the home team deep in its own territory. We punted the ball down on their two with just over a minute to go. and. Uh... Elway got the ball, and I remember distinctly there were two fourth and tens that they had. One of them, he ran for it and got the first down, and the other one, he started to run and then hit one of the receivers. Vance Johnson, I think it's who it was. Some of the worst coaching I've ever seen. That defense had players on the field that hadn't been on the field passing situations all year, and they kick a field goal with a few seconds left to win. Lost to Denver, the great comeback with John Elway. We knew if we had got past that game that we was going to go all the way. There was no question in our mind that we was going to go all the way. The Oilers played almost half their games with injured quarterback Warren Moon on the sidelines. And by week 16, their postseason hopes were in serious jeopardy. Houston trailed the Browns in a must-win situation, and time was running out. They had a 13-point lead, and it was approaching the two-minute mark. We got in a long yardage situation and got out of the thing with a 70-some yard screen play that, uh, that saved our life because we were backed up around 15-yard line. 35, 40, breaks loose! It's Bale, 40, he's got it! Angle on the play, Terry Taylor will run him out of bounds inside the 15! With a pair of scores in the final minutes, Houston secured a playoff berth while seemingly shaking the demons that had plagued them for more than a year. Exercising ghosts of the past had also become a crusade for the Buffalo Bills. Winners of back-to-back -back conference titles, but merely also rans in the NFL's biggest game. We entered the season after losing two Super Bowls, which can be devastating. 
with a frame of mind which I think was unique among football teams in the National Football League. This was the most resilient group of individuals, I think, that's ever played the game. We were determined to get back there. Marv kept the perspective, said, hey, you guys are going to go to another Super Bowl. You guys have to realize, okay, sure we lost one, well, sure we lost two in a row, but you guys still have the core to go back to another one. The talent and desire were still there, but the rest of the league had affixed a bullseye on the Bills' jerseys and was well prepared to take them on. It was just a question of trying to fight to stay on top. We're the team to beat in the AFC. Everybody's gunning for you. Our no huddle offense, people were starting to catch up a little bit to the things that we did. And of course, we're always trying to continue to stay a step ahead of people, but teams were doing a better job on us. Playing the 92 season, we just had a roller coaster year that year. Then all of a sudden, we would just look at ourselves in the mirror and we said, wait a minute, what are we doing? Why are we getting beat by teams we shouldn't be getting beat by? The final month of the Bills' schedule was blemished by jarring defeats, as well as a rash of untimely injuries. We had some late season losses, yes. We had some injuries late in the season, which were very hurtful. Cornelius Bennett, uh, Bruce Smith was playing with badly bruised ribs. That contributed to some losses. The most devastating loss was to a team called the Houston Oilers. We played them on the final game of the season. It was two rivalry teams, the teams that really didn't like each other, you know, Buffalo and, and you know, Houston Oilers. And, you know, we wanted to kick their butts really, really bad. You know, we not just wanted to beat them, but we wanted to kick their butts. And, you know, we knew that we can do it at home. If we win, we win the division and get a bye. But not only did we lose, but we lost pretty badly. And of course, we lost Jim Kelly early uh, in the second quarter of that game. Went down with a knee injury, and he was going to be out for a couple weeks. And so here we are in our quest for our third AFC championship. We've lost our franchise quarterback. We just got beat real bad uh, in Houston and, and, and also didn't win the division. And so here we go, having to play a wild card game. We were jacked about it because there's nothing more encouraging for a team to dominate one team one week and then to know you're going to ultimately play that team again. It's a tremendous confidence booster. It was a very dangerous situation for a team to be in, though, because it's the ultimate setup, the ultimate setup for failure to be so confident in yourself going in against a team that was irrespective of their injury situations at the key position on the field was capable of beating you. Two Buffalo rarities emerged as wild card kickoff approached. The first was a significant number of empty seats. We were well aware of the fact that the game wasn't sold out. I mean, that was a huge deal at that time. We just sold out every game no matter what. I mean, when you had a team that went to two Super Bowls in a row, it wasn't like it was a meaningless regular season game. This was the NFL playoffs. Well, what it meant is that anybody that wanted to see the game had to come to the game. There were tickets available, so they did have the opportunity. But as far as watching the game on TV, it was not broadcast in western New York. The other surprise came from the weatherman. Even with prevailing winds, the mercury had soared to 41 degrees, near tropical weather for western New York. Beautiful day out here today. Can't get any better than this. They said Buffalo was supposed to be cold in January. Gusting as high as they say before the day is over, 35 miles per hour. It will come from our right to our left. The Bills have it to start the ball game. Brown comes to the near side, Tillman on the far side, and Christie's kick heads toward Tillman. Far side, five yard line, right up the numbers to the 10. 15, stuttering his way to about the 20 yard line. So the Oilers will go on offense. We know it'll be a Warren Moon. Wide receivers Haywood Jeffries and Webster Slaughter will start. Curtis Duncan and Ernest Gibbons. The running back will be Lorenzo White. Across the front, Don Maggs, Mike Munchak, Bruce Matthews, Doug Dawson, and David Williams. On a long count, Moon to throw. Looking quick outside. Duncan a diving catch at about the 23-yard line. It'll be covered up there by James Williams. The Bills on defense will go with Phil Hansen, 
Jeff Wright and Bruce Smith across the front. Linebackers Daryl Talley and Shane Conlon. And then six defensive backs. Henry Jones, Mark Kelso, Kurt Schultz, James Williams, Clifford Hicks, and Nate Odoms. Three receivers go left. Moon short rolling left, throwing left, has slaughter. That's a first and ten for the Oilers. Quick outs, so Warren didn't have to hold the ball very long. On first and ten for the Oilers across the 30-yard line, Moon to throw again. Running away from pressure to his right, directing traffic. He's going for the sideline, bumped out of bounds to the 28-yard line by Phil Hansen. He just kept rolling, 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 and hoping that one of them dogies would get open. Again, they call an audible at the line. Everybody relaying the signal. Moon rolls left, sets up, steps up in the pocket. He's going to take off the run, sliding down across the 30. At the 33 is where he first hit the turf. Warren protecting that arm will pick up five yards on the play. It'll be third down and eight for the Oilers. From the 33-yard line, three receivers come right. Jeffries alone on the left against Odoms. Bills bring five. Moon looks, throwing it deep for Jeffries. He's got it across the 40-yard line in Buffalo territory down to the 36. And he with Jeffries and Warren Moon taking advantage of that height of that receiver and able to show off his great leaping ability. He was a great basketball player in high school, and he showed off there. First and ten in Bills territory at the 36-yard line. Slaughter in motion to the left, give the ball to White on a delay. He starts right, breaks back to the left, and dives forward to the 32-yard line before Mark Kelso will make the stop. This is a real good drive because it's got us down in their end of the field and used up a whole lot of the quarter that we have to play against the win. Moon again looks over a three-man front. He'll drop back to pass, four-man rush, throwing outside right. Slaughter again across the 30-yard line, shoved out of bounds at the 27 by Kelso. Ten minutes, ten seconds to go, first quarter, no score. Moon on a delay for White, trying to go outside left. He'll be brought down at the 27-yard line, but that's shy of a first down. Daryl Talley, how many times have we said how often this guy comes to play? Well, he's come to play again today. It was actually Henry Jones's man initially. Jones slipped, and Daryl Talley came up the pursuit from the backside. And they're going to keep Del Greco on the sideline. They're going for it here. Oh, well. Jack believed in us, you know, been on the road. I said, hey, let's go for it fourth and two. Uh, I was a little skeptical because that's not like Jack Party taking chances like that. Lorenzo came up to Warren's back and to get the play because he audibled out of a pass and play. I can't believe that we running the ball on fourth and two here that we've got four receivers out there. Sprint draw, White over left side. He's, oh, he hit the 25-yard line, bounced off the man, dives forward for the first down. Wow. He bounced off of Kurt Schultz, went backwards to the 27-yard line, spun outside and got to the marker for the first and 10. Stayed on his feet and had great body lean enough to get the first down. And what a shot that Schultz delivered on him as he got to the 25 the first time. Moon again on a delay. This is White. Breaks it to the left. 25, 20, 15 yard line. Has the first down as he goes to the 12 and maybe the 11. Schultz is the man on the tackle. It's first and 10 Oilers outside the 11 yard line. Slaughter in motion from the right to the left. Moon is going to throw. Four man rush. He has a man. Jeffries inside the 10. He puts his shoulder down. Will get close to the five yard line. Driven out there by Nate Odoms and Henry Jones. They're not thinking first down by any means. They're thinking touchdown. Moon looking to throw. Pump fakes, forced out to his left. Now throws, touchdown! Touchdown! Haywood Jeffries on the catch, and the Oilers have taken it down the field and put the six on the board. Warren Moon had room to run. Odoms took a step in, thinking that Moon might try and run it in. And just that split second enabled Moon to fire it in there to Jeffries. That's a great call, Greg. Warren Moon pretty much made that touchdown happen by just moving out of the pocket. Warren Moon essentially dissected us. He cut us up, but the way we looked at it, there's a long time in this football game. All right, we got an offense that can run like a cash register. We believed in our offense and we believed in ourselves, and we just said, hey, just keep playing. Well, after an 80-yard drive that covered nine minutes and one second and 14 plays and a quiet Ridge Stadium right now. Here's the kickoff by Al Del Greco. Brad Lamb activated for this game is deep along with Kenneth Davis. They kick it over to Davis. He takes it at the 11, runs to the 15, gets to the 20, the 25, the 30, the 35, the 40, still going and out of bounds at the 44-yard line. A tremendous run by Kenneth Davis on the return. 
Bills take over offensively. Frank Reich after the 33-yard return by Kenneth Davis. We, as Van said earlier, 4-2-5 alignment to start out against the Bills. And here we go. Thurman Thomas is the lone setback. And the Bills go to work at the 44, and Thurman runs a trap play and gets out to midfield on a nice quick opener there. You know, last Sunday night, the Bills ran their first four plays on the ground and gained 35 yards, and then we couldn't believe they went to the air and had an incomplete pass. Let's see if they stay on the ground. Oh, I think they will on second down and four. And here is Thurman again, and this time they're going to get him for a loss of a yard. He was hauled down in there. Sean Jones got through. It'll be third and five for the Bills. Frank Reich will go to the shotgun as he changes the play back to throw. Here's Reich looking, throws. He's got the tight end, much large, for a first down to the 40-yard line of the Oilers. Well, Frank Reich saw something there. And here's a run by Thurman to the left, and they've got him for the loss of a yard. It'll be second down and 11 for the Bills. Reich waiting in the shotgun now. Dropping back, he gives to Thurman again, and at the 40, at the 35, and they stop him there, about four yards short of a first down. And the Bills are faced with another big third down play. Reich takes the snap, backs up in the pocket, lets it go. Good to Reed at the 30, at the 25, at the 20, and he's down to the 18-yard line. 17 yards on that play. That's that patented Reed crossing pattern. And we said during the second half last week, it's no coincidence that Frank Reich is able to find him where Jim Kelly was having trouble throwing that pass over the middle to Andre Reed. Big play. First down at the Oilers 18. Bills trail 7-0. Reich, a run by Thurman at the 20, trying to get outside. And he noses it down to about the 16-yard line. But the yards are coming very tough for Thurman oh, Thomas. Let's go. Let's have some dinner. Come on. It'll be second down and eight for the Bills. Reich waiting. Hands out stretch. Backs up the pass. In the pocket. He's going to run the ball. And he is going to be hauled down at the line of scrimmage. Let's get six, baby. Let's go now. Come on. Let's see if Reich can convert another third down. He's had two on this drive. Drifting back. He throws. Oh. And Lofton was held up, but there was no flag. It was not a catchable ball. Now Steve Christie will try a 36-yarder off the left hash mark, trying to get the Bills on the board. Here's the kick. It's on the way, long enough, and it is good. So the Bills have scored. Houston leading 7-3. The AFC wild card game between the Oilers and the Bills is a quarter roll. Welcome back to Ridge Stadium, Orchard Park, New York. We get set to start the second quarter. Oilers on top, 7-3. The Oilers' second possession of the ball game. White is the back, it's a four-man front, he's got the ball, breaking the left side, he's got the first down across the 30, and close to the 35-yard line. Slaughter starts in motion, right turns and goes back. Moon is going to throw, four-man rush, lofts it down the left side for Jeffries, he's got it! In Bill's territory at the 40, they say he's out of bounds. That's uh, a great, great Wow. Catch. Super catch. That's too bad. That loosens up the defense, though, and here they come on second down and 10 from the 34. Moon is back to throw, rolling short to the right, looking, throwing to the right. He throws, he's got a man, Gibbons, across midfield, in Bill's territory. They'll spot him down at the 44-yard line. Gibbons comes in motion, picks up the audible call, and comes back to the left. Turn, counterplay for White, looking for Rue and he'll get a yard. Bruce Smith will corral him. Those were not boos you were hearing. Those were bruises coming from the fans here. The slaughter comes in motion all the way through, right to left. Moon setting up in the pocket. Has time, throws it back. Has Gibbons inside the 40. Slips the tackle of Henry Jones, but cannot get away from Daryl Talley and Kurt Schultz. That'll be a pickup of five on the play and leave the Oilers with a third down and four. Slaughter comes in motion, right to left. Moon sets to throw over the middle. Has Gibbons again at the 30, running outside. He'll be run out of bounds there. The man who took him down was Nate Odoms, but that'll be a first and 10. First and 10. They're just outside the Buffalo 30. Moon short rolling right, throwing right. This is Gibbons at the 25, bumped and spins off of Clifford Hick. And the Bills have been mystified by this short passing game of the Oilers. Basically, playing against Houston was like the run and shoot offense is like playing basketball. You got four first-round picks out there that are running around, and you're trying to chase them and trying to catch them in open, open space. Small guys, good moves. All Warren's doing is just spreading you out and dinking the ball off to them and letting them run and beat you. White the back on second and five. 
Moon on a delay. White looking for room up the middle. Breaks left inside the 20, inside the 15, all the way down to the 10-yard line. What a great, great balancing act and play by Lorenzo to stay on his feet and clearly get the first down. Moon calls the audible. White's got the ball, gets through a hole at right guard and gets inside the seven-yard line, close to the six. Second down for the Oilers. Three receivers again left. Moon with a long count. Fake it to White. Looking, looking. Into the end zone. Got a touchdown. Webster Slaughter. The offensive play calling and the execution have been flawless. Two long 80-yard marches, folks, here in the first half on the road in Buffalo. With so many of the uh, factors that people say, um, will preclude or prevent us from playing well, such as being away in the winter, uh, cold weather, etc. Here we are playing as good a game as you can possibly play. Following a quick three and out by Buffalo, Houston regained possession of the ball at its own 33. For the third consecutive drive, the Oilers executed their offense to perfection. Sprint draw, White looking right, cuts it up inside the tackle, David Williams. That's a three yard gain, it'll be second and seven. They only bring four, it's a delay. White looking for up the middle room. He breaks away from one tackle. Stutter stepped away from Jeff Wright. Got across the 40. Six minutes, 20 seconds to go here in the second quarter. 14 to three Oilers. They have the football first and 10 at their 43. Moon's gonna throw, he has protection. Down the middle, he guns it. He's got a man. This is Gibbons inside the 40, inside the 35. And he'll be brought down at the 32 yard line by Clifford Hicks. First and ten for the Oilers. 5.35 to go until halftime. They lead 14 to 3. Sprint draw. White cuts it back over the right guard spot and hurdled over Phil Hansen. Hansen got down low and just raised himself up and took White to the turf between the 31 and 30 yard lines. Clock marching at 4.25 until halftime. It's a 14 to 3 Oiler lead. Moon back to pass. He has good time. He throws. Deep. Touchdown! What a, what a catch. catch! Good job by number 80, Curtis Duncan, to hold on to the ball. And what a throw by Moon to plant it right over the safety's shoulders. People always had, had uh, criticized the run and shoot as being an offense you couldn't, couldn't function in bad weather. And then again, we were playing probably against the best secondary in the AFC that day, and they were probably playing the best defense at that time. So that was probably one of my fondest memories playing because of the, of the challenge of that game. He just did anything he wanted to. Warren was really prepared to play that game that, that weekend. That weekend, he was perhaps the best quarterback in the first half I've ever seen anybody ever play. I've seen him in this type of zone, but this was a zone that you, you, you wish for and that you dream about. And when he hit Curtis Duncan over a play that, well, I guess the only guy that day could have thrown a ball like that was Warren Moon. And he threw a ball in, into a, a coverage that was perfect. It couldn't be in the left hand, because if it was in the left hand, it probably been an interception. But he threw it into the right hand, and Curtis sealed his body and turned it. It was just an incredible catch and throw. One of the best I've seen of all time. You cannot do anything right now except say the Oilers are playing as good a first half as has ever been played. They've done nothing wrong. And if I'm Warren in the offense, I'm itching, and I'm saying to the defense, yes. get me the ball back again, and we'll give you a 25-point lead. They can't stop you. You know that. You know that. We're the defending AFC champions, two times running, and we're just getting schooled in our own backyard. To get beat at home is worse than anything, I think. I mean, it, it's just like somebody walking into your house, punching your mom in the face and saying, oh, how you doing? You like that? And let me do it again. Bop! Staggered by the reality of an 18-point deficit, the Bills offense showed its fight on its next possession. Third and 22 for the Bills from their 30-yard line. They'll drop off into zone coverage. Here's Reich. He steps up in the pocket, runs into his own man, rolls out to the right, throws downfield. Reed's got it, and it's a first down. Yes, yes, yes. Here we go. Yeah. After driving to the Houston 32, the Bills went for the first down instead of the field goal on fourth and four. We were down 21 to three. Three more points wasn't that meaningful. If we could come up with the big play, similar to what Houston did on their first drive in the game, uh, it would have been a lot more of a lift for us. And here is Reich on a fourth and four for the Bills at the Houston 32. A big play for Buffalo. Reich trying to get it by the air. He throws incomplete. No flag intended for 
the tight end, Pete Metzlars. And the Oilers hold on down, so we'll get the ball back with 1.15 left until halftime. The Bills had lost more than ball possession. Thurman Thomas's hip injury would now limit his availability for the remainder of the game. Obviously losing Jim is bad enough, and then Thurman kind of aggravates a hit pointer in the first half, and uh, you know, and ends up leaving the game, and it's questionable, and, and maybe, maybe can come back. We got the three best players out, and we blocking their best player. I think, you know, a guy over there, uh, Bruce Smith, uh, a guy that we probably had three or four guys on all day, but we were blocking them, so we felt like this game was over. At that point in time, we, you know, we were in control. The Houston All was in control, and there was nothing that anyone can tell us at that point in time on the field that, you know, we, we wasn't in control and that we wasn't going to win this game. At the 33-yard line, when you turn the football around, it's first and 10 for the Oilers. Moon throws outside right, has the man Duncan down at the 43-yard line. They're going to give him the first down at the 43. Let's go, D! 10-yard gain. It'll now be first and 10 from the 43-yard line with 111 left on the clock. Moon to throw, forced out to his left, pulls it down once, now throws, has Jeffries on the sideline, steps out of bounds near midfield. 17 yards, guys, in two plays in just 15 seconds. How about that clock management? On a long count. This is a delay for White. Breaks it back to his left at midfield. Will get down close to a first down at the 47-yard line. Come on, Buffalo! Matthews goes up on right. Give it to White up the middle. He's fighting. He's fighting. He ran into Hanson. They were stopped up there. Carl Bill Bailey. Hanson and Bailey. Got into the hole to stop uh, Lorenzo White. This one could shift the momentum of the ball game. Moon looks it over, looks it over, movement at the line. Jeff Wright came across. Not snapping. Warren Moon's hard count on fourth and one drew the Bills nose tackle offsides. The Oilers quickly capitalized on Buffalo's blunder. Slaughter in motion, right to left, Moon looking to throw it. Wings it down the left side. This is Jeffries diving inside the 30-yard line to the 29. He's calling timeout. 20 seconds to go, 27-yard line. It is second, third down, rather, and eight. Moon looking, lofting it down near sideline. Jeffries at the five, he's in, touchdown! Hey, was Jeffries, his second touchdown of the game. The fourth touchdown pass for Warren Moon. You want to call 81X choice. He just threw it a perfect 15 yard pass and I ran right underneath it and I ran for 10 yards in the rest of the way. Everything was going Houston's way. You could read across the field the feeling and rightly so that we've got this one and certainly uh, despair on our side of the field at the time. A rich stadium route at least at halftime. 28 to 3 the Oilers lead it. Oh my. I remember sitting at halftime and my locker's next to Tasker's and we were just sitting there we, first of all, we were like, I can't believe this is happening. I mean, this is unbelievable. I hate to end the season, you know, like this. So we were basically talking like it was over. I mean, anybody who, who sat there with a straight face and said, uh, you know, the Bills still have a chance, uh, you know, had to be, I, I really would check whether or not they were sober. Consequently, what you hear are phones beginning to uh, being picked up. Writers in the Houston contingency are now making non-refundable flights for the next playoff game. We're all making our Marriott reservation at Pittsburgh for the next round. Pittsburgh had to buy, making plane reservations. I guarantee you, everybody calls someone at halftime. Uh, and all we did is the coaching staff and players, let's keep the high down to a minimal. But, you know, that was tough. We were in the locker room. We were a good team. And we thought in the locker room at halftime, say, listen, we may not be able to win this game. But let's go out and get some self-respect back. A determined Buffalo team emerged from the halftime locker room, trailing Houston by 25 points. Four plays into the third quarter, that deficit would grow. Bills at their own 48-yard line, right from the shotgun. Four-man rush for the Oilers, right throwing it to the right through the hands of McKellar. It's picked up, McDowell, down the far sideline, 40, 30. He misses the man there, and he'll score for a touchdown. Bubba McDowell. Well, you know, the lights are on here at Rich Stadium. They've been on since this morning. You could pretty much turn them out on the uh, Bills right now. I did know, notice when we th threw that interception for a touchdown that there were people leaving the stadium. Um, a lot of people thought it was over. I myself, you know, I'm like, okay, oh, we got this game. We, we got this game. This game is over. I'm standing there. Abramowski was our equipment guy looking at me. I said, don't worry about it. We got them right where we want them at right now. 
He looked at me like I'd lost every bit of sense I had. Now, jokingly, not jokingly, but I sort of walked over to Frank Reich and trying to encourage him a little bit. I said, Frank, you're going to lead the greatest comeback in the history of the National Football League. Hey, remember Frank Reich is a senior in Maryland, engineered one of the greatest comebacks in the history of college football. Maryland was trailing by 31 to nothing to Miami. He and the Terps ended up beating the Hurricanes 42-40. Maybe he could do a 32-point comeback, huh? I mean, it was certainly running through my mind. Uh, and that experience told me a couple things. Number one, it told me it could be done. It's just executing the offense. And, and yes, you need some big plays. But um, if you get the team effort, if you get the defense shutting them down and special teams executing on their end, there's no, re there's no reason why it can't be done. When the score was 35-3, to I could understand a team feeling, it's all going our way, we got this one in our back pocket, there's a little bit of jocularity, maybe, maybe, that goes on. And it wouldn't have happened only on their sideline, it would have happened on the sideline, I think, of every team in the National Football League. And I think it would have prevailed most times. Unfortunately, there's been so many times where you, your mind starts wandering, and especially on this team, to, to think of what would happen after this. You know, who are we going to play next week? You could sense a little bit that they felt like they had the game in the bag. And this was a great quality team with a lot of great players and good, good character players. But after six quarters of dominating the Buffalo Bills, I think they lost just a little bit of the edge. Buffalo's first break of the game came immediately after Bubba McDowell's interception return as the Bills recovered a mishit kickoff attempt by Al Del Greco at the 50-yard line. We called the squib because we were kicking off into the wind. We had it called to the left, and the guy that played center for them had shaded to the left a little bit, and I hit the ball, and it ended up nicking the guy. And they got it. You know, we, we hit the guy, and I've been around uh, pro football now 30-some years playing and coaching, and uh, I've never seen a return man get hit with a ball like that that they got. We got it. Pretty good position. Now we've got to do something about it. What you do after you get a big play is very important. Not just getting the big play or the big break. First and ten in midfield. Frank Wright dropping back in the pocket. Let's it fly over the middle and it is caught down there by Metzlars at the 30 and he runs down to the 25. He actually got it about the 32 yard line. That ball went right through the hands of Eddie Robinson. At that particular time when Eddie Robinson missed the ball you know I thought he had the ball so I hesitated and it just and it ends up going right through the linebackers hands and Pete has great concentration and that started to be one of a series of things that happened in the second half that were plays that seemed very unusual that could have went either way or could have went against us that ended up going for us here's the first down play at the order 26 right to throw again Let's it fly, makes a completion to the 20 to Andre Reed. A gain of six yards, it'll be second and four. Waiting for the snap, back to throw, or Kenneth Davis rather. And here's a sack on Reich back at the 32-yard line. They got him again. It was the left hand, William Fuller. Here's Reich to throw. And he's got the completion to Reed, and I believe they will give him the first down to the 15-yard line. Yep. Bills trail 35 to 3. Must get a touchdown here after giving one up on the deflected interception. Here's Reich to throw. Out into the left flat. Reed and it is incomplete. Stevie Jackson was coming out on coverage and Reed could not hold on. Second and 10 at the 15 yard line. A run by Thurman. At the 15, at the 10. Kenneth Davis. To about, or Kenneth Davis to the 7. Third and two. Now Reich is back under center, going to throw. Flyers it, and it is incomplete. Down at the goal line, and uh, Andre Reed wanted a interference call against Steve Jackson, but doesn't get it. It's fourth and two. Reich waiting, gives it to Kenneth Davis. He runs for the first down and more, and jams it down to about the two-yard line. Davis and Carwell Gardner are the backs. They give it to Carwell here. No, it's Davis running left, trying to get to the corner flag, and he is in for the touchdown. So the Bills have finally scored. With 8.52 left in the third quarter, they go 50 yards. When Kenny Davis took it across uh, the end zone, make it 35 to 10, you know, I think there was some relief. Okay, we got a little something going here. When he made that particular run, 
you can kind of see the momentum shifting a little bit. It was like, oh my God, here it goes. My recollection was that I went up to Marvin and said, Coach, this is the time for the onside kick. And he immediately agreed. He might have uh, already made the, the call, but uh, I wanted to get him out of the huddle as quick as I could, uh, you know, that, and get him out on the field so that it didn't look as if we were planning something there. So it was very quick. We just got in the huddle. I said, onside kick. Let's go get it. Christie ready to run up and kick it off the tee. And a little onside kickoff, and it didn't go far enough. Wait a minute. Yes, it did. Let's see who got the ball. Yes, sir. Bears might have the ball. You better believe they do. They and guess who does it? Christie. Christie got his own onside kickoff out at the 48-yard line. I didn't even know we were trying an onside kick. I was over talking to the offense and, you know, about what we're going to do the next time we get the ball, and all of a sudden everybody's screaming and cheering, and you turn and you look, and we had recovered the ball. I didn't I didn't even know we tried to – it was such a surprise onside kick, it surprised us as, as an offensive team. It was strictly gamble at the time. Steve Christie kicked it perfectly, and he got a fantastic block from one of our special team aces, Mark Pike, to wipe out the man who would have recovered the kick. Steve came up with it. We had it. What we did now after that maybe had to be the most vital part of our comeback. The Bills need a touchdown to get back into this game. Drops back in the pocket. Sails it long. Oh, oh Beebe at the 10, at the 5, in for the touchdown. John Beebe was wide open. A blown assignment there. A blown assignment indeed. He put a move on the corner, Jerry Gray, and was wide open and down the near sideline and suddenly Rich Stadium has awakened. Had Jerry and I communicated better on that particular play, it would have never happened. He would have never been alone by himself back there. You know, from a quarterback's perspective, it was, I saw it as a blown coverage. When we lined up, Jerry turned around, looked at me, you know, you couldn't hear at that particular time. He's pointing up at the line of scrimmage. And so I'm thinking he's telling me to run up there in the flats and he was gonna go back to the, to the deep third. Well, it was the opposite. A second reason Don Beebe was open for the touchdown is that he stepped out of bounds, which should have made him an ineligible receiver. Actually, the ref uh, was quoted in the USA Today, I guess, and he said that uh, he had clearly seen the play and said that he had seen green in between the white and said that it was not out of bounds. So I don't know, but the angle I saw on the TV, it sure looked like I was out. So there's two breaks right there. One side kick, BB's out of bounds, should be in, ineligible, can't come back and, and touch the ball. They missed that. So, you know, all them planets, man, were lined up, man. You know, they were lined up right. I remember sitting on the bench with David Williams, and, you know, you look at the guy and you don't want to say it, but the, that doubt creeps in because it's happened so many times before about here we go again. Suddenly it went from 35 to 3 to 35 to 17. With 7.56 to play in the third quarter, you got to believe if you're a Bills fan. It's 35-17, and you're kind of thinking, well, you know, they got two. There's no way they're going to come all the way back. Stadium, Steve Christie trying a short pooch kickoff, and the Oilers ran into each other. The first onside kick, people would argue that it caught us off guard. The second onside kick, the pooch kick, was a different type of situation. Tony Brown ran into one of his own men trying for the football. They're lucky that Brown held on to the ball. That was one of those events in the course of a game that makes you look over your shoulder. And from that point forward, it's not an issue of our talent against their talent. It's, are we going to uh, self-destruct? Are we going to do it ourselves? We had three touchdowns scored in the first seven minutes and ten seconds of the third quarter, and this is the first time the Oilers' offense is on the field. I mean, we must have stood over there 20, 25 minutes before we even got a chance to go out in the field for our first uh, series. Our offense just pretty much got out of rhythm. The once unstoppable Oilers' attack began to misfire. After a three and out, Greg Montgomery shanked a 25-yard punt. The fans are suddenly back in the game, sensing one of the big comebacks in NFL history. I think one of the things I'll always remember is uh, the fans who left the game, many left the game at halftime. Now their tickets do not allow uh, readmittance to the park. so. A lot of them were trying to climb over the fences, and the security guards were telling stories about how at first they were trying to you know, do their jobs and keep people out, but eventually they just had to let them come in. We had two and a half touchdowns to get before the game was over, before we even tied it, or got ahead of them, and we knew it was gonna happen, so did the fans. We knew that we could come back and win that game. 
because it started when we saw the other team turn off the intensity and coast. Big Mo has swung the way of the Bills right now. The defense does come up big. Back comes the offense. Fake handoff and a roll out to the right and a pass downfield. Caught at the 41 yard line. We can overcome, baby. We can overcome this. Right under center, first and 10. Here's a run by Kenneth Davis. They wrap him up and stop him for virtually no gain. Reich using three wide receivers on second and nine. Reich waiting. Steps forward. Throws long. Wide open. BB. And he's got it. A flag on the play. He is out of bounds at the goal line. What a play. How BB has gotten so open, I don't yeah. understand. Chris Dishman is saying it's coming back. Number 79 raised up. Ball start. Oh, boy. Five yards. In the shotgun. Dropping back. In the pocket, the blitz is on, he throws short, 50, down to the 45, 40, 35, Kenneth Davis, 30, and tumbling down to about the 25 or 6 yard line, goes Kenneth Davis, a tremendous play on the little right screen. Well, the D's got to come up with a big play, they, in this quarter, they have just been, uh, they've been handled out there with the exception of the McDowell uh, interception for a touchdown, they've been pushed back, they haven't tackled well at all, haven't wrapped up anybody, and the, they let the Bills back in the game. 429 left in the third. Here is Reich. Looking to throw. Rolls out. Throws. Down there is a Reed at the five. In for the touchdown. Andre Reed has scored. As this game swung. Oh, ho, ho, like a tidal wave here at Rich Stadium. And there's a conversation in the secondary between Steve Jackson and Jerry Gray. I just ran a little out. Kind of looked back at Frank a little bit and just turned it up the sideline and you know, there was nobody there. It looks like Steve Jackson, who's playing a flat, like that's his responsibility, but it's actually the corner. But instead, he jumped on the slant. Those were the kind of little breakdowns that started happening on the other side of the ball that we just started taking advantage of. Everything that they got, we gave to them. It was a breakdown after breakdown, after play, after play. And again, for the second time, uh, Bob, in, in this quarter, an order cornerback expected help behind him, didn't get it, let a man get behind him, and a touchdown. My, oh, my, how the situation has changed. Yeah, that's uh, the understatement of the year. You know, you got to give Buffalo credit. They were down 28-3 to at the half. I'm sure the coaches told them we're still in the game. And then moments in the second half, they're behind 35 to 3, and they may have thought the coaches were lying. <laughs> they're back in the game. Moon gets the snap, backs up to throw. Looks down the middle, wobbles. Ball is tipped, oh, intercepted. Oh. Henry Jones back to the 35, 30 coming left, 25, and it'll be brought down by Doug Dawson at the 23 yard line. I can't believe this. That was off the hand of Webster Slaughter yep. and Henry Jones who picked off eight passes during the regular season once again was Johnny on the spot and the Bills are deep into Oilers territory. There's an NFL policy that states that there is no cheering allowed in an NFL press box. We reiterated it three times and finally just gave up. There was so much cheering going on from the Buffalo side and so many groans going on from the Houston side that after a while, as we read the policy, it was being drowned out by everybody cheering or groaning. They coming at you again, boy! The old man! The old Starting man. at the 23-yard line, down by 11. Davis runs right. Davis darts and gets down to around the 20-yard line. They don't want it! Right in a passing situation. Here's a running play. Davis at the 20. And oh, they've got him wrapped up at about the 18 yard line. Bills are coming! Reich waiting, takes the snap, drops back, cocks the arm, can't find anybody, rolls out to the right, now throws incomplete. Boy, he grounded that one as William Fuller planted him. That's a, that's a big play by Reich, Tom, because if he gets sacked there at the 34, they're kicking a 51 yard field goal. Uh, maybe not. Maybe they'd have gone for it. I don't know, because they're going for it here on fourth down. Timeout called by Wright. Marv basically says to me, what do you like, Frank? I told him, I like Bull 65. If they play a soft cover two, we got a chance of hitting Andre down the middle. That was the play we had called before Frank Wright called his timeout. Frank wanted to be sure we didn't want to go for the field goal. So a big fourth down play here. 
Well, we had Giant. a momentum shift before. Let's see if it shifts here or not. Everybody's standing to watch this one. You'd bite a nail in half if you didn't get something here. Reich is going to the shotgun. Fourth and five at the 18. There's the snap. He backs up. He looks. He throws. Reed! Touchdown! Reed for the touchdown! Unbelievable! The Bills are back in it now! Big time! Fourth and five, I mean, that's... That was a big gamble by Marv. We were being bold. We had done a lot of bold things. We were going to do another bold thing at the time. I believe if we didn't make that, the game was over. Uh, again, Steve Jackson and I just had to get around him and put a little move on safety and go to the middle of the field. And they were split like the Red Sea, man. It was wide open in there. We was like, you know, who are we going to get to cover this guy? Stadium. Oh, oh yeah. Like never before. Oh. Incredible. He beat Steve Jackson in the end zone. Hey, still got one more. Still got to get one more. Now 35 to 31 is still in the third quarter. There was an anxiety. I don't know if you want to define it as panic, but there was a sense of hey, we, a desperation. We need to do something. As the game tightened, Euler jitters intensified. Three times on the next possession, Houston nearly committed devastating turnovers. The quarter ended with the Oilers struggling to maintain their four-point lead. There was certainly no overconfidence on our part that this is inevitable, we're going to win this game. We scored all those points going with the wind. And now we're going to have to turn it around in the fourth quarter and win this game going against the wind. Early in the fourth quarter, the besieged Oilers defense finally regrouped. After nearly picking off an interception, Houston forced a Bills punt. Led by Moon and Givens, a recharged offense put together its best drive of the second half. 35, Bills 31, a touchdown here would be so very important. Moon to throw, throwing it deep down the center of the field for Jeffries, he can't bring it in the goal line. I remember that play more than anything. If I, if I get that play, this game is going to be over. And I, and I kind of put that on myself because I put Nate in the position to make a great play on that football. So that was a good 40-yard toss. That would have been a score. Moon is under center, has the snap, drops back. Looking, forced out of the pocket to the right. Oh, yeah. Still looking, right. still looking. Pumps, he's in trouble, and Jeff Wright will sack him at the 47-yard line. <laughs> Jeff Wright comes up with the sack. They say back at the 46-yard line is where they spot it down, a six-yard loss. And now a big, big third down play, third and 16. Moon to throw, down the middle, picked up. There's a flag on the field, though. Wilson the passer. Oh, oh, no. 15 yards. Oh, oh, no. Oh, boy. That has completely Arms shut up this crowd for the moment. Instead yeah. of an interception coming back the other way, it is going to be order football still going, although Warren is slow to get up. Bruce Smith called oh, for roughing the can't passer. Can't do that. Cannot do that. Unacceptable. Well, well we're seeing the replay hard. up here. He did bring him down. Defensively, we're sitting there going, wait a minute. We just made the play that we had to make, and now it's being called back. It's all right. Forget it. It's over with. They can have that play. We'll make another one. The Bills' defense, in need of a big stop, got it from two reliable, if often underappreciated, linemen. Phil Hansen's shoestring tackle of Lorenzo White and Jeff Wright's lunging sack of Moon forced a third and long from the Bills' 20-yard line. Remember, two huge defensive plays in this series by Phil Hansen. This time, Shane Conlon should have brought Leonard Harris down. Harris spun away, almost ran for the first down, but it was Phil Hansen from behind who brought him down. And now here comes Del Greco. 
this will be just across the 20 yard line about 31 or 32 yards Greg Montgomery to hold he bobbled the snap he bobbled the snap Del Greco shifts it to Montgomery and he is sacked the ball is loose it's picked up by Talley Talley's going down the far side Mark down. but the officials are saying it's down where Del Greco first tried to tip it back at the 26 yard line everybody's heart totally broke at that point. It was one of those days that uh, our offense shut down, defense couldn't stop them, and our kick and all went at the same time. A snap, catch the ball, put it down, kick. Couldn't do it. Those are fundamental things, and the only thing a coach can point to, only thing that a player can honestly come to a conclusion of, is that my head is not in the game. Um, I choked, in other words. Bills are getting all the elements right yep. now. Momentum, the fans, and the weather. Yeah. The rain, it, it caused Craig that Montgomery ball. He was not able to hold it. I certainly felt for Montgomery, being a holder myself, knowing it's not an easy job. The wind was blowing. It was cooler at that point, and damn. I remember it raining, and part of the reason that he couldn't handle the ball, but I don't remember thinking at that time that that was going to be a problem for us. On that play, though, he kind of fumbled the ball. I got it, and I kind of pitched it to him. And I don't know who it was that grabbed me, but kind of tackled me to the ground, and my head hit the turf. I mean, I didn't know where I was for about five minutes after that. First down at the 26, right to throw against the zone, a screen at the 20. Davis, 25, 30, gets a block and slips and falls down at about the 32-yard line. Frank Reich in the rain on second and four from the 32. Reich waiting, dropping back in the pocket, looking, lets it go, and it's Phoebe juggling, drops the ball. Conventionally, you got to throw on third and four. I felt like we had a good chance of running this, run this play, and it, it's not so much a draw play, as it is actually a power counter play, which Kenny happened to be really good at running. Rain coming down now, the crowd on his feet below, and a running play, Kenneth Davis, and he's got the first down and more at the 40. The midfield, down to the 40, he stumbles and falls. He might have gone for the touchdown. That play was almost a disaster from the start. I almost didn't get it all the way into his stomach, but he did a good job of bailing me out and holding on to the ball. I'm thinking he's going to go all the way and put us ahead 38-35 and one of their defensive backs just just trips him up. Steve Jackson, of all the bad plays that had happened, he saved the touchdown come. He barely, barely caught the tip of Kenny Davis' feet. And so you're thinking, ah, we almost, we, we could have used that one because it's not going to be, it's not going to be easy going into the win and finishing this drive off. 521 to play, Reich waiting, takes the snap. Here's a run by Kenneth Davis trying to get outside and he dives down, maybe a yard, second and nine. The Bills have got to get it all here. Here's Reich, back to throw. There's the quick pattern, it's good to BB, and he's short of a first down, down around the 26 yard line, they've got to get to the 23, he's down to eight seconds on the clock, he's back to throw, he fires and it's good to Reed, and Reed's inside the 20, and down to the 17 yard line, it'll be first down for the Bills, 348 to play, and the ball is at the 17 yard line of the Houston Oilers, and the Bills have a first down. In the past, Andre Reid has been Frank Reich's favorite receiver when Reich has been a starting quarterback. Such has been the case today. Back to throw. He looks. He throws. Touchdown! Andre Reid for the touchdown. The Bills have scored. They have scored to take the lead with 3-0 to play in the game. Andre Reid, three straight touchdowns. It is bedlam. It is pandemonium. It is pandemonium. As he said in Buffalo, it was pandemonium, man. It was crazy. I have never heard people that loud. You know, if I wasn't here to watch it, I don't think I would have believed it. I would not. I call a pass where basically I'm sending all four receivers down up the seam. You know, it was a safety in the middle of the field, so all I had to do was stay up the hash and away from him as long as I could. And I kind of look off a little bit just to hold the free safety Roberts in there. I just needed to freeze him just for a second. Marcus was looking at Frank Wright all the way, but for some reason, you know, with great instinct that he have, he did not move to the left. It was like he waited and waited to Frank through the ball. It was too late at that time. The touchdowns in the second half for the touchdown passes, this was the one that was probably executed 
to perfection. I mean, the other ones, there were some breakdowns and coverages and they were even a little bit ugly. But this one was one of those ones where the Oilers were in good position, they played the coverage right, but it was just executed very well. Now you talk about character, this is one. This is a team, damn it. I never have a sense we're going to win a game till the final tick goes off the clock and we're in front. And scoring with three minutes to go, it's not time to celebrate. 3.08 left, the Bills now lead at 38-35. We that are here watching this game, watching perhaps the greatest game in the history of the playoffs, certainly, and maybe in the NFL. I'll tell you, this game here is kind of a microcosm of the Oilers' recent franchise history. The Oilers now 72 yards away from a winning touchdown and about 50 yards away from a reasonable, with the wind behind his back, Aldo Greco field goal try that hopefully they can spot. Swings it out to the right, bobbled by Duncan, taken in, he's headed for the sideline, he'll go out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Second down, five yards to go. Four-man rush, Moon to throw, over the middle, he's got Gibbons at the 40, spinning away and up to the 41-yard line. Hanson will make the Give stop up, there, Hanson. but that's Give a first up, and 10. White is the back, Bills rush four. Moon looks, throwing back to the right, has Slaughter. Headed toward midfield and headed out of bounds at the 49-yard line. So again, the Oilers are taking that short underneath pattern, making it pay off. 2.09 left. Again, a four-man rush for Buffalo. Moon with plenty of time, drops it over the middle. This is Givens again. He's headed for the sideline. He'll run out of bounds right near the 40-yard line. I'll tell you what, gentlemen. If the Bills win this game, the Oilers' spirit has got to be tremendously broken. Conversely, if the Oilers can score here, it's got to break the Bills' heart just as much. Moon back to pass, setting up over the middle. He's got Slaughter at the 40. He's headed for the sideline. He'll run out of bounds at the 36-yard line. 1.55 to go. Oilers in Bills' territory. Moon looks to throw. Back to the right he goes. This is Duncan. Curtis go upfield. Oh, he goes out of bounds instead at the 34. It's only a two-yard gain. At some point, Bum, they've got to have to make the decision. You've got to get a first down. They're now looking at third down. We have all our time remaining. It's a four-man rush. Moon will throw. Ball tipped at the line of scrimmage, and it goes out of bounds. Well, now you're down to one play. One never, ever changed his emotions. And, you know, he went right in the huddle. Hey, let's make the first down. It'll be fourth down and four with 1.43 to go. Ooh. Your season rests on this play. Everybody on the Bills' sideline imploring the fans to cheer. If they had sat down, they're back up again. Here it is, fourth and four from the 34. Moon's going to throw. Looks, looks, now throws. There's a point where if you get hit with a sledgehammer, it's going to take you a while before you stumble back and you say, okay, now I've got my feet underneath us. That's what happened to us in this game. What a great job of patience by Warren Bowman. And great protection by the offensive line. 16-yard gain to the 16-yard line. You're still alive with 120 and counting. Everybody is just exhausted right now. Now it's just going to be who wants it the most, who's got the most gas left in the tank. And... I think we wanted it more than they did at that point. Now the Oilers can go for the juggler here. First and 10 Oilers at the 16. Moon again looks flushed out. Now throws it. He's going to throw it away. Duncan is back there in the corner, but he overthrew him. Now one thing the Oilers have got to remember here is that they're in field goal range. Granted, they haven't made a lot of big field goals at the end of games this year. Moon is going to throw. No, he's going to give it to a white down of delay. Breaking to the right. Inside the 15. Conlon will bring him down at the 12-yard line. Big down here, third down five from the Buffalo 11. The play clock is at three, is it two? He got it away. He's looking, he's in trouble, he spins away, he's running to the 10, sliding down at the nine yard line in front of Carlton Bailey. He does not have the first down. I gotta put that on the coaching staff right there. It was the most conservative three plays that has ever been called in football. I'm sorry. And we gotta, we gotta score a touchdown. I was so teed off. Why would you want to go OT with with this team and being in that stadium? Seven Pro Bowl players on offense, and you going for a tie. And that's the players that took a lot out of us. I thought they didn't believe in us no more right there. And I never thought that would never happen to a Houston Oilers team. It's all or nothing on Aldo Greco's right foot. It's nervous time for little Al. I usually always know how far a field goal was that I attempted in a game. 
And when I got home that night, I asked my wife, you know, how far was that last field goal? Because I, I didn't remember after the, being hit on the head and all that. Thank goodness it was a relatively short field goal. Montgomery says they're ready. He's got it back and down. He's got it up. And the kick is good. It's good with 12 seconds to play. And this one seems to be destined for overtime. I was trying to convince our special teams coach that if we won the toss, to kick off and use the win. I could understand Al DeGreco's sentiment. The single most important weather factor in a football game to me is win. After accepting the ball and not the win, the Oilers' possession lasted just three plays. Third and three for the 27. Moon's going to throw for it. He's got plenty of time. Throwing it out to the left. It's intercepted. Nate Olips at the 36-yard line. Still on his feet. Breaking to the outside, now coming back inside. And he'll be brought down at the 35-yard line by Haywood Jeffries. Play his comeback in playoff history. It's the boys. It's the It clearly looked like tally held Ernest Givens. Probably not much doubt about that. It's a legitimate gripe on their part. I got five yards in which to put my hands on the guy. I could beat you up and mug you and punch you with bones. I keep you right in front of me in that five-yard period. So the way I see it, I didn't, there was no laundry thrown at me. Like the referee's gonna call a penalty. I said they could have tackled every receiver out there. It wasn't gonna be no penalty call them Buffalo. After two short runs by Kenneth Davis, the Bills went for the win. It'll be a third down play coming up, and Steve Christie is coming into the game. The Bills spent a lot of money to get him, and now he gets his shot from about 31 yards. Bills can win it here. Wright puts it down. The kick is on the way, and it is good! And the Bills have won it! The Bills no. have won it! It's funny, when that winning field goal goes up and you see it go through the uprights, the immediate elation for five or six seconds isn't there. You look, is our flag, is this and that, am I sure that I see it go up? And then it was. Elation. It was like a bunch of roaches, man, just came on the field and you couldn't stop them. At any point in time, can somebody please just wake me up? You know, because I'm like, there's no way that these guys could have come back and beat us. It was kind of icing on the cake to be able to hold for the kick and to be there when, when Steve made it. I sat there for a good 20 minutes just trying to comprehend what had happened. That was a great way to win a football game. It had to be the worst feeling in the world. That's what the game is all about, those moments like that. You know, it's one thing when a game comes down to one play and somebody makes a spectacular effort. But it's another thing when you have to come back from 32 points and it takes every guy on the team and on the coaching staff and the whole organization shares in it because you know that to do something like that, it's bigger than just one play, it's bigger than just one person. We blew the game. It was nothing that they did uh, to win the game. We gave the game to them because we, we just we made so, so many mistakes. It had to provide inspiration. Never give up. Never, 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 never give in. Really learning in a football game, every play counts. We used to also look at it another way. You don't really get beat. You just ran out of time during that game. And if you're given enough time, we'll get you. You know, people talk about what is choking. Choking is when the external events impact your personal performance. And the only way you judge that is based on what you do. You know, it happens in basketball all the time. It happened to us on that day. And I think probably one of the things I'll remember the most, after going through all the hugs on the field, you know, looking up into the stands and seeing my family sitting up in the stands and giving high fives and hugging each other, um, you know, that's just, very, that's just a very special moment um, to see them up there celebrating with you. It comes back to me that we're going to always be a team that that took more players to the Pro Bowl that year and lost a lead and, and a, a game that could have got us in the Super Bowl, something that we've been looking for for a long, long time. I think it's a, it's a heroic comeback, a miraculous comeback, and also one of the colossal collapses in the history of professional sports. The Bills' overtime win prolonged one of the most resilient and improbable runs in NFL playoff history. You celebrate for 24 hours, maybe in this case 36, but uh, then, you have to, then you have to go back to work. With Reich still at quarterback the following week in the divisional playoffs, 
The Bills upset the top-seeded Steelers in Pittsburgh. I remember after the game when Bill Cowher congratulated me, he said, you're, you're a team of destiny. Jim Kelly returned in the AFC Championship game, and the Bills trounced the Dolphins. Winning the conference championship game in Miami still goes down in, in Buffalo history as one of the greatest wins in playoff history. We went to the Super Bowl, but we got drugged. I was convinced when I stepped into that game early in the second quarter that we were going to come back and win the game. I just think there was that sense that this is just meant to be, that this is our year. This time, there was no comeback magic as the Cowboys buried Buffalo. But even in humiliating defeat, the embattled Bills fought to the bitter end. It's a fumble! It's a fumble! He had it knocked out of his head! The Bills returned to the Super Bowl the next year only to lose once again to Dallas. Hands off to Thurman, and they grab him, and he fumbles the ball, and they, it is picked up by the Cowboys. They run it back to the 35, the 30, down to the 20-yard line, in the clear, at the 15, down to the 10, down to the 5, and in for the touchdown goes James Washington. What we did, again, may never be done again. So that's something that we can hang our hat on. Sure, we never won, but four in a row, Believe me, it's much harder to do than win and one. Frank Reich never quarterbacked in another playoff game after Super Bowl 27, but his name will be forever linked with January 3rd, 1993, and the greatest comeback in NFL history. It's very satisfying to me to hear parents use that as a lesson to their kids about never giving up. However, I'm always quick to tell the parents, and, and I'm quick to tell people about the other side of that, of course, the Super Bowl story side of it. And that's really years, now years looking back, that's the beauty of it. In a three-week period, I experienced the highest of highs and the lowest of lows in the profession that I was in, in the NFL. You know, life is not always living up here every day on the top of the mountain, that there are difficult circumstances that we go through in life as well. And the message in both of those is to never give up, to persevere. This NFL Films production has been brought to you by NFL Network. Watch the National Football League 24 hours a day on NFL Network.